What's good, what's good, what's good? So, to start off this look, I'm gonna be using Stud Brow Pencil by MAC Cosmetics, and I'm just gonna be defining underneath my brows, essentially just creating the shape of my brow, and then I'm gonna take the pencil and create little hair-like strokes in an upward motion to mimic the idea of hair and create a little tail for the end of my now very straight brows. Yes, I did cut the end of my brows off because I was tired of not having enough space to do the kind of looks that I do. So yeah, I chopped them off and I love it. And to shape underneath my brows, I'm going to be using the MAC Cosmetics Foundation Brush. This is a flat foundation brush. I'm going to be using P. Louise Base and a mixture of MAC Studio Finish Concealer. And I'm going to just be shaping underneath my brows. Um, the reason I use this flat brush is because it's big, so it covers a lot of surface area. So it kind of does the work for you and uh, it takes less time. It used to take me a while to do my brows, but with this brush, it kind of just cut that time right in half. Moving on to the eyes, I'm going to be taking ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the color Elixir and Morphe's M573 brush and just defining my transition area and crease, going back and forth and kind of uh, curving it up towards the tip of my brow. And then I'm going to be taking this color, it's called Paradox by Colourpop, and I'm going to be deepening that a little bit more, a little lower than the transition area, and curving it up towards the tip of my brow as well. I really, really love Colourpop Super Shock Shadows, especially the matte ones, just because I feel like mattes typically go in the crease and the transition area, and I just like the way they blend out seamlessly and they don't skip because it's a cream, so it, it just blends out so well, and you can really build that color in there. And then whatever you put on top blends seamlessly as well. Next, I'm gonna be going in with a box of crayons palette by The Crayon Case, one of my favorite brands ever. And I'm gonna be taking the color brown and going right underneath those two colors that we kind of blended together and uh, just going in a curve towards the end of my brow upward. And then I'm going to be taking on a very precise brush, I believe this is the 219 by MAC Cosmetics. I'm going to be taking a little bit of mixture of the brown and the black and defining underneath that as well. Just so that when the crease is cut, there is some actual definition. Next I'm going to take that same Morphe brush and start blending that crease area out. You'll never catch me slipping on that lemon tip though, so I'm going to go in with the color red from the crayon case palette, or the box of crayons palette, I'm sorry, and uh, I'm just going to kind of blend that out into the transition area. A lot of these looks really consist of kind of going back and forth and blending, so even if you've already created depth in the crease, sometimes you still have to go back and redefine add color and blend out. That's kind of the secret of blending in my opinion, is going back, adding color, and blending away. Add color, blend, define, repeat. Period. Period. Moving on to cutting the crease, I'm going to be taking Max 252 brush and P. Louise base and going slightly above my actual crease and begin cutting the crease. I like to stamp my crease color on, or when I'm cutting the crease, I like to stamp the cut crease, just because I feel like it really gives that sharp cut crease line. And I also only use the tip of the brush. And just FYI, this is the MAC 252 brush, but it is the original brush. They've now um, since updated their brushes, and frankly, most of them suck. Um, <laughs> no shade, I'm just being truthful. The original one that I'm using now is absolutely amazing, um, but yeah, they've since changed it, so um, I would recommend using the Crayon Case Cut Crease Brush. I'm using it now to kind of pat my lid down so that it's free from creasing. Um, this brush is pretty amazing in terms of cutting the crease. So now for our beautiful rainbow effect. You know, I gotta, I gotta show you I can sing a little bit though. <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to be taking the first the yellow color and packing that onto the P. Louise base. Then I'm going to be taking the color red and slightly mixing it in with the yellow to kind of give the color of orange because yellow and red makes orange. Then I'm going to be taking purple and placing that right next to the red, stamping that on. Then I'm going to be taking a mixture of the purple and the green to make like a blue color. Just because the blue in this palette was a little bit shiny, so I wanted it to stay relatively matte. I'm just really going back and forth with those two colors to create the color blue. And lastly, I'm going to top it off with the green. And making sure not to disrupt the cut crease, just going right underneath it. Underneath my eyes, I'm going to keep it fairly simple and just use the elixir color and kind of blend that out. And for my lashes, I'm going to be using Black Label Lashes in the style Flutter. I do have a 10% off code for this and it is an affiliate code, so if you want to support your girl, please make sure you go ahead and click that. And just like that, she got freckles blue. And for this sick as highlight, I'm going to be using that Snow Flush. This is probably the best highlighter they've ever come out with in life. It was a limited, but you know, I had to use it anyway because it's my favorite. Yes, look at that. For my lips, I'm going to be using MAC Cosmetics Chestnut Lip Liner. And I am going to be overlining my lips today like I do every day because I'm about that overline line. Then to top it off, I'm going to be using Best Teddy Lip Gloss by MAC Cosmetics and uh, Clean Kisses by The Crayon Case. And then off camera, I also applied some lower lashes. And that pretty much completes the look.